Hey everyone, welcome to Zoo Atlanta's Animal Tales. My name is Melissa and I work with the zoo's education department. And I'm here today to share with you one of my personal favorite stories. It's one of my favorites because it's fun to read out loud and it also has a very important message. And it's called Vulture Verses, Love Poems for the Unloved, written by Diane Lang. So let's jump right in. I'm writing friendship notes. I love sending cards to all my friends, and I don't want to forget anyone. But look outside. I see someone who probably never gets a note or birthday card or even a valentine. I'm going to send a card to him and to all our other secret friends. You can see out there that there's a vulture outside of his window. So let's see what he writes to his vulture friend. Turkey vulture, please be mine. Not because you soar so fine, but cause you rock on cleanup crew. No rot is left when you are through. Just by eating what has died, you kill the germs that grow inside. You deserve, it can be said, a pat upon your bare red head. So turkey vultures not only clean up carrion, yes that means dead stuff, um, but their digestive system also kills any germs that may be there. So they help keep animals, and maybe also us, from getting sick. Let's see who's next. Little mole, you leave a hole, but you have a bigger role. You sift the dirt as you proceed to hunt each bug or centipede. You don't eat plants or tender shoots. You leave alone the growing roots. You solely look for the critters that might serve as moly fritters. Cutworm larva, beetles too, who might eat our gardens through. And you mix the healthy dirt, and really, does one molehill hurt? Or even more, they can be flattened, as our mole friends become fattened. On that dinner underground, so please, dear mole, do stick around. The rumors about moles eating plants is not true. They really eat the bugs and slugs that cause the plant damage. They might make your lawn look a little less than perfect, where they push the dirt from their burrows up to the surface, but they really do no harm. All right, next one's a spider. Spider, I could give you hugs because you eat those garden bugs and insects who might sting or bite, but I won't try to squeeze you tight lest I squash a friend so fine. So go on spinning out your line of silk to catch those insects who gobble leaves my garden through. I can see a spider there. And his web. Okay. So if it weren't for spiders, we would be up to our knees in insects. If you find a spider in your house, help it safely outside so it can keep doing its good work. Ooh, a skunk. I love skunks. Okay, let's see what he wrote. Skunk, although you sometimes stink, you're sweeter than most people think because you eat each buggy pest that thinks my garden tastes the best. You chomp each beetle on the vine, so be, dear skunk, my valentine. So skunks eat large numbers of insects that are considered harmful to humans. They especially like cockroaches, and they often dig up and eat yellow jacket larvae. Very cool. Ooh, the next one's a fly. You can see him there on that apple. Oh fly, though no one thinks to ask, recycling is your secret task. You eat the things that die or spoil and make them part of growing soil. So though I shoo you from my plate, you're someone I appreciate. So flies are specialists at eating things that are dead and decaying, getting them ready to become part of the new healthy soil. So we do need them. Oh, the next one's a snake. Okay, so dear snake, some people run or yelp. Instead, I thank you for your help. You guard our food from beans to rice by eating all those rats and mice. So I'll not fuss. I will let you be, so please slither on with love from me. So they may be unfamiliar or even sometimes scary to us, but snakes are very important in keeping nature's balance. And only 10 to 15% of snakes 
worldwide are actually venomous. So that's good to know. Oh, up next is a familiar bird. Okay, Jay, you can be naughty bird, but still I love you when I heard that some lost acorns that you hide will sprout new oak trees far and wide, which then give shade where each bough bends and homes for other feathered friends. So Jay sometimes will rob other birds' nests, but they're responsible for the growth of new trees for more nests. They will hide their acorns and other nuts and sometimes forget where they put them. And many forgotten ones will sprout and grow into trees. So blue jays are helping trees grow. Ooh, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes are the next, the next one on the list for a poem. So you buzz around, you bite my arm. I must admit, you do some harm. But mosquito, let's note too, there is some good in what you do. You pollinate as you go round, helping plants spring from the ground. I will behind my screen shut tight. I'll give you a hand, but not to bite. So yes, even mosquitoes do have their place. Like many other insects, they pollinate and only the females bite. This next one is one of my personal favorites. So reduce, reuse, recycle is what we're supposed to do, using things yet once again and making old things new. And you're the champ of doing that, dear cockroach on the ground. You munch what rots on the forest floor, wherever dead stuff's found. You make things into smaller bits for turning into soil. A big, big job for little you. Thanks for all your toil. But may I say, now that we're here, though you can glow with pride, we recycle on our own, so please don't come inside. So cockroaches have a very important role in maintaining the energy cycle that returns nutrients from dead plants and animals back to the soil. So they have a role to play too. The next one, ooh, look at this, it's a vampire bat. So how kind you are, oh vampire bat, we need to copy good deeds that you do for others in your group, like giving hungry friends some soup and taking orphans to your care. Though small, you're big enough to share. You live a way that does inspire, and so I praise you and admire. Some really cool things um, about vampire bats. So these tiny flying mammals of Central and South America share food with other bats in the colony who did not get enough to eat. So yes, that means they do regurgitate their own blood meal. Um, and they also adopt others orphans. Their saliva makes their small bite painless to the cattle or the chickens that they'll take blood from. And then they're rarely interested in the blood of humans. So no need to worry. Okay, so your stinger is like Cupid's arrow, very sharp and very narrow, but sharpness doesn't quite compare with what you give us from the air. I love the blooms you pollinate, the honey sweet upon my plate. So I'll ignore your sharpest end because dear bee, you're such a friend. So you can see the bee right there. So do you like melons? How about peaches or pears? Um, bees pollinate these fruits and many, many more. So gathering pollen as they seek out uh, the sweet nectar, um, they're helping us get the food that we need. So we owe them a really big thank you. Okay. Here's a, another bat. I love you, bat. You eat in Maine, those moths who dine on fields of grain, and then mosquitoes you devour, sometimes 600 in an hour. Some bats straight to the fruit you go. When you drop seeds, more fruit will grow. So thanks for eating what you do. My loving heart goes out to you. Something to consider. Without bats, we would be harvesting much less grain including the wheat, rice, and corn we need to make bread, cereal, and other food. Bats use echolocation to grab hungry moths and mosquitoes right out of the air. 
Ooh, another one of my absolute favorite animals, the opossum. On nighttime visits, possums go, searching down each garden row for snails and slugs they find sublime. So dear opossum, please be mine. Come through my garden any day, or night I mean, your time to play. These nocturnal marsupials are omnivores, meaning they eat everything. They're especially fond of plant-eating snails and slugs, so gardeners can welcome a visit from an opossum. So many more cards to write, so many animal friends. I may need some help. Do you know someone who's misunderstood? Will you help me write some friendship notes too? Thanks again for joining me today for our storybook reading of Vulture Versus. And remember, even if an animal seems a little bit creepy or a little bit scary, it still has an important job to do in its environment. It still has a role to fill. Now, I would like to encourage you to do a fun follow-up art activity and write a letter, a poem, or create something to show your appreciation for an animal that might be misunderstood. Here's what I created. I did a collage and a poem written to my favorite insect, the hissing cockroach. At night, you crawl along the forest floor, eating dead plants, rotting fruit, and more. You don't fly, sting, or bite, and don't mean to cause a fright. Of course, something would be amiss if I didn't mention your unique hiss. All right, everybody, have a great day, and I'll see you next time for Animal Tales.